We are gathered today to worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have done, done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is from the ELW, number 576, We All Are One in Mission. of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. Character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning is from Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, and James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, and Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a toast testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Paul has a word in the second reading that we don't like to hear. Suffering. But what does Paul mean by this? It's a very deep peace that he's working on. The suffering that the Apostle Paul is writing about in Romans 5 is a suffering that comes because we are dependent on the grace of God. 
It's a suffering that comes because our hope is in God. It's a suffering that comes because we're living in this world but not looking at this world. We are. But ultimately we're looking ahead to the kingdom of heaven and trying to live life according to that kingdom as we see it coming. It is the suffering that we see in Jesus and trying to emulate Him and trying to follow Him. So suffering produces what? Endurance. Okay, I can get that. It means we keep at it, get stronger. And then character and hope. But where I tripped up, where I got stuck this week, was character. What's it mean to be a person of Christian character? And so I dug into the Greek behind that, and, and you know that word that we translate as character? It looks like it may have been a word that Paul invented to try and communicate something. The concept of testedness. Testedness, not exactly an English word, but testedness. Maybe an overtone of maturity in there would help. That we've been tested, that we've become mature in Christ. I've put a lot of time into sitting with that this week. Largely because I'm fussing with exactly those things. What's it mean to be a mature Christian? And I, I've been thinking on that in three different areas or levels. What's it mean to be a mature Christian in the swirl of stuff that's going around on the national level? And I had some time this week with some beloved folks of mine. They, their family, they went through a hard time a couple years ago and they did kind of like a family therapy sort of thing. And they worked it through. And they, they came to a different level of, of communicating and, and learned about things like I statements and sharing what they were feeling. But I happen to have contact with them this week because the families come underneath a new kind of trial. And in a couple different conversations with them, I heard something old coming back that I don't think they can hear yet. They've slipped and they started using they and them instead of talking about their family members by name and sharing thought. They're starting to edge into that kind of language that is about blame and the thought and the problem is over there. Can't be with me. And so I'm wondering, what's it mean to be a brother in Christ as that family reaches out to me? To be of Christian character, maturity. And then in the midst of all of that, I got news that just a, a dear soul fellow that I care about a lot made a horrible mistake and now he's going to pay some consequences for a long time. What's it mean? What's it mean when somebody does something that you really don't like? What's it mean to be of Christian character? Christian maturity and to view them or to view a family or to view a nation not in terms of how they are at the very moment but how you can see them to be in the kingdom of God and what the future is. How do we be a mature Christian when tension is high stress is happening. What's, what's good news for us? What's a guide? It's all so confusing. I don't know how many times I read through the lessons this week. More, more than usual, just it's like, there's nothing here. And then one of the times through, 
I remember that advice I give people all the time, don't just read the lesson. Read what comes after it, read what comes before it. And then I saw it. The Gospel reading for today, it's based in tension. It's based in stress. What happens right before this is Jesus does one of those marvelous kingdom of heaven sort of things. There's a person possessed by a demon and Jesus heals that person and brings them into the fullness of God. And a lot of people around are, yeah, but there's a group of people that are just, no. And this is one of those passages where Jesus is accused of basically being a demon casting someone else, casting a demon out by the power of a demon. And it struck me. So, what does Jesus do? What's, what's his response? And then I saw it. He did not argue. And he did not fight. Even though these were just the very people that would eventually someday crucify him, he went out and he kept on doing the same thing. He went out to tell the good news of the kingdom. And where he met people that were hurting and suffering, he brought them healing. And when he saw people, he didn't differentiate who was inside the crowd. He said he just had compassion on them and he looked on them as harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, it seems to me a pretty mature thing to do. And he looked and he saw the herd in the context and he saw it's a harvest where people can go out and work and share good news and the Lord needs more laborers. And then he saw the 12 people, ordinary folk, fishermen, nobody really exciting, no academicians, no priests, no pastors, just common ordinary folks. And he sent them out too. And he sent them home. He sent them, as the text says, to the house of Israel, to their very own people, to tell them that the activity of God is near, and work, and go to the sick, and tend to the dead and dying, and cleanse people, and cast out the nasty stuff. Some might say in our parlance today, go to your own circle of influence and there proclaim the kingdom of God. It seems to me to be good news for us when life is confusing and you're not sure what to do. Then go. Just give that kind of love away. Just because you received it without payment. You got it for free. Give it away for free. Give. Give peace. Give grace. Like Christ. Give life to the ungodly. And look well. See? I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Do not worry. Do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at the time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Ah, the good news of the Lord. What does Christian character, what does Christian maturity look like? When all is in a fuss, all is in a turmoil, it might just be 
that it looks like Jesus. The hymn of the day, Will You Come and Follow Me, EOW 790. together be together for the praying of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Holy One, we come today and we pray for your church. We pray for this nation and all its people. And we pray for ourselves, individually and in all our tribes. Help us hear your summons and follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to be people of peace. Not necessarily a quiet peace, but a passionate peace. A peace that looks like Jesus, that will not stop going, that will not stop healing. Will not stop curing. Will not stop bringing life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And stay, Lord, we pray for your children who do not have voices advocating them on the news or on social media platforms or with big audiences. We pray for people under the radar. We pray for young men and women who are being trafficked for their bodies. We pray for those that do not have the assets that our culture reimburses for. So we put them away in homes and institutions. We pray for the forgotten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray to be people of life and love and living. So we're going to lift up to you now, Almighty One, either silently or aloud, all the prayers and concerns on our hearts and lips. As we pray, we pray cup-eared for your summons to follow you to the very people we have prayed for. Lord, in your mercy. Hear your prayer. We pray for the dying, the bereaved. Especially this day, we lift up Anne's family. Surround them in the power of your word, making them certain that because Christ lives, Anne and Carl and all our beloved ones, we all will live with you. Lord, in your mercy, 
In your hands, O Lord, we do commend all of whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, may free you for us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There are many ways to share grace, to offer back to God the graces that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit grace us with moment to moment. We offer to one another a few moments of silence, a bit of space, to reflect on living as an offering, self, time, and possessions, all being gifts for sharing grace in all the moments of our days. As a partner with you in this mission of God's to live together in the love of Jesus, inviting everyone to join, I thank you on behalf of God and all God's people, known as David Lutheran. There are many ways and places to join into God's redeeming work. Thank you for believing in the mission of this people and place that is worthy of your efforts to bless God. We, will you pray with me a prayer of offering? I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my God. Christ inviting us to new life. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And
and of God's only Son, our Lord? I believe in Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. Yes, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And of the Holy Spirit? I do believe, and in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna! Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, In this cup is the new covenant in my blood, for it out and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the light is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. With all faith and trust in God's grace and kindness, I invite you now at home using something for the body of Christ, something for the blood of Christ, to share with one another this gift of love, the body and blood of the risen Lord and Savior. All is ready. Please come. The body of Christ. body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ, given for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith 
toward you in fervent love toward one another, and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you forever and keep you in Jesus' peace. Amen. The final sending hymn is ELW 669, Rise Up, O Saints of God.